Okay, I think we're recording now. Good. So, uh, hello to everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Adam James Fenton. Uh, I am a lecturer at the London School of Public Relations in Jakarta, Indonesia. And I have been asked to uh, do a short talk um, as part of the Global Alliance uh, Education and Training Week and uh, to give um, a presentation from Indonesia. Uh, I'm a lecturer in uh, one of the subjects that I, I teach is strategic issues management. So I thought um, what I could do today is to uh, make a, a short presentation about the principles of strategic issues management and how they can be in the current uh, situation of the coronavirus crisis in Indonesia. I was thinking about what would be of interest to people in other countries around the world and I thought it might be of interest to people to know what the current situation is here in Indonesia and what the government and other uh, organizations have been doing in response to that crisis. So I wanted to start by talking about some of the principles from strategic issues management that we teach our students here at LSPR uh, in Jakarta. And um, so, so some of the, the main lessons or the main golden rules that we try to teach our students are that firstly, in an issue, when an issue is developing or a crisis situation, listen to your stakeholders. Um, listen to what your stakeholders are telling you. Um, that may be your customers, the public, or other stakeholders, and uh, try to understand from their perspective what their expectations are of your organization. And if there is a legitimacy gap between the performance of your organization and the expectations of your stakeholders or your publics, then you should try to close that gap by uh, adapting your, your operations to to such a point that they will fill the expectations of your stakeholders. We also teach our students to respond as quickly as possible and the, to, to be honest in your communications. Um, those are two extremely important rules. If you, uh, if you don't have it, some information at your fingertips, uh, you should not try to cover up or conceal uh, that information, but you should tell your public if you don't know, then simply say you don't know and that you will follow up uh, later with with details when you get them. Um, yeah, so the, the the idea is don't don't cover up and don't base your strategy on wishful thinking or the way you would like the situation to be, but you should really do your research and base your your strategy, your communication plan on the actual data as you have it. Um, also, you should make a coordinated plan and you need to, of course, communicate very clearly with your stakeholders, whoever they may be. Now, I wanted to look at the situation in Indonesia and, and have a look at what has actually happened here. And it appears that the government has actually broken quite a lot of those um, those golden rules from from strategic issues management. Uh, there is a widely held kind of uh, belief here that the government has underreported the number of actual cases of the virus and the number of people who have uh, passed away from the virus. Um, so that would appear to be breaking one of our rules of, of uh, issues management. Um, the response from the government has been fairly slow. In the early stages, uh, there, there was some indications of wishful thinking in some of the responses from some of the government ministers who were saying things like, um, Indonesia was immune from the coronavirus because uh, Indonesians pray and, and prayer would therefore be um, an effective way of stopping the virus. 
Um, others said things like the the habit of Indonesians to drink jamu, which is a kind of traditional medicine, um, was was a, actually made Indonesia immune from the virus. Now, this was back in the early days when uh, it hadn't actually hit Indonesia very hard yet. It was still <clears throat> mainly in China and heading uh, towards the rest of the world as we now know. Um, it was only uh, some weeks later that the government, I think, realised the actual uh, severity of the situation and started to take this situation seriously. Now, in the last week or so, uh, the national government of President Joko Widodo has implemented what's called the PSBB. It is a large-scale uh, social distancing program which requires people to um, distance themselves and uh, entails a, a, a quite a number of different measures to close uh, public um, places, to uh, limit uh, the amount of passengers that can go on public transportation, um, to limit the, the number of people um, who can go on cars, buses, uh, trains, etc. And um, there is a strong recommendation for people not to be out in the streets. So, um, yeah, the, there is also a limit on uh, OJECs, which are um, which are uh, motorcycle taxis that are very commonly used in Jakarta. Um, who usually are able to take one passenger on on the on the pillion, so one pillion passenger. In this case, they're no longer able to take passengers. So, OJEX, which are really a, a very important part of social and economic life in the capital, have been quite limited in what they now can do, and their role now is limited to the delivery of food and other essential items to people in their homes. So, yeah, so so that's a bit of a summary of what the government response has been. Um, slow at start, but now starting to ramp up. And we hope that that will start to take on some serious um, effects on, on the slowing the, the spread of this, um, this virus. Now, just quickly, I wanted to also discuss the role of private companies in this uh, crisis and c companies like Gojek which is um, a major uh, Indonesian company um, which has led the, this sort of tech revolution in terms of um, uh, transport and delivering of products to people um, you, by, by way of motorbikes and also in cars. Um, companies like that and Grab um, have adapted their their operations quite well and have also uh, communicated quite well with their customers. So I, I've received many, many emails from companies like Gojek and Grab and others, uh, Tokopedia, which is an online shopping company, um, stating how they have uh, adjusted in their, their operations their drivers are now using masks. Their drivers are asked to um, regularly wash their hands or use sanitizer. If they're making a delivery, they will place uh, the, the, the item uh, on, on their motorbike or in some other place, and then they will step back and allow the, the person uh, to, to take the item. So there is, there, is, there, uh, there is distancing at all points of that um, delivery process. So, and they've, they've sent out emails and other communications showing with sometimes with animations how this um, process should take place. So I think these, these companies um, the, the, have actually adapted quite well, and they've they've they have um, communicated fairly well with their uh, with their customers and their stakeholders. So, yeah. So you, there is a bit of a contrast in the responses there. We've we've seen the government, which is perhaps less um, less willing to um, to act quickly and. Uh, firmly at the beginning of the crisis there was um, some denial 
some wishful thinking and then ultimately an acceptance and and some action was taken uh, other other tech companies seem to adapt much more easily and quickly and 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 communicate that very quickly to their to their customers um, in the education sector which affects us um, obviously um, we have uh, gone fully online so all of our classes now are done uh, using uh, online uh, tools like Google Classroom and Google Meets. So I am doing my, my classes with my students every day using these video uh, chat and using the other facilities that are available in Google Classroom, which are all free and are excellent. You can do online quizzes, you can set assignments, you can get all of your, your grades from the quizzes and various things imported and exported as, as Excel documents. So it is actually a very um, useful tool to have. And it makes me think that in a way, we are actually quite lucky that this crisis has hit at this time. If it had hit, say, 10 years or even five years ago, I do not think we would have had the online capability to adapt to it so quickly. Um, obviously, some of our, we already had an online program, so we were able to take some of the, the um, methods that we use from that program and implement it uh, across the whole school quite quickly. So, and, and Indonesia has quite a good 4G network, so students are able to, um, to, to join the, the online classes. And I'm very glad to see, as of just yesterday, uh, some of the large mobile broadband uh, providers have said that as a response to the crisis for educational institutions, they will allow um, a certain amount of uh, data, two gigs or three gigs per month for students who are enrolled uh, for free. So they are coming to the table and giving this, uh, this facilities to students to study online for free. And that is, that is great news. Uh, because when you're a student, obviously your your budget is very tight, and um, you, using your your money for data can be quite a, a big part of your your budget. So I'm very glad to see that those some of those companies have stepped up and are giving free uh, data packages for students. So that's about it from me from Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, the the as I, as I uh, present this now, the numbers in the official numbers are at around 5,000 people um, infected by the virus and around uh, 500 dead or approaching those numbers. So still relatively small compared to some other countries around the world, um, especially the US or parts of Europe. Um, so that's a good thing. But what is um, of concern is that, that the in a, in a little over a month, uh, the major holiday season will be starting. That's the Edel Fitri holiday season. And at that time, usually there are uh, the majority of the population, which is in Indonesia is, is large. The total population of Indonesia is around 250 million people. So at that time, when we see millions and millions of people traveling to other parts of Indonesia, that obviously is cause for concern in terms of the spread of the virus from centers like Jakarta to other parts of the country. So the government has actually taken some action here and said that the, the annual leave, which is usually given over that period, will be moved to December. Um, and they are strongly recommending people not to travel. And in, in combination with those limitations on public transportation that I mentioned before, it's hoped that that will be uh, sufficient to try and um, stop the spread of the, the disease. But that does actually remain to be seen. We, of course, will hope for the best and uh, in this case, prepare for the worst and let's let's wait and see what happens. So that's it from me, uh, Dr. Adam James Fenton. I'm a lecturer at the London School of Public Relations 
Institute of Communication and Business in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, this is uh, my, my chat for the Global Alliance uh, Education and Training Week. Thank you so much for your, um, for your attention and for listening. Uh, I hope that you are all safe and well in this very challenging time. And uh, see you. That's all for now. Bye-bye.